name is Elma Kirkwood. I'm with Workforce Solution for Tarrant County. And this morning, we are going to try to give you some information about how to tailor your resume. Uh, one of the things I'm going to really um, talk about, when you're tailoring your resume, you wanna make sure that you read the job posting very carefully. Your resume is a picture of you on paper, and this is what gives the employee a way to read your information and then call you in for an interview, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm going to start from the beginning. And Esmeralda, can you see this? Yes. Okay, good. All right, hopefully you'll be able to uh, walk this with me. How to tailor your resume. What is a resume? A resume is a short account of your experience, qualification, and your achievement. The goal of the resume is to capture the reader's interest so that he or she wants to speak with you. That's the main thing. You wanna be able to capture the reader, the person that's actually reading your resume. They wanna be able to fill the information that you are sharing with them. Uh, most resumes get a five to seven second scans by the reader or the employer, and the resume must have enough impact to grab the attention of the prospective employer. So make sure that you read that job posting very carefully. What's next? Uh oh. that you would like to apply for. Once you read that job posting, you wanna make sure that your um, information is good, that you wanna make sure that everything is from that job posting. Please read the job posting very carefully. Now, when I'm talking about knowing your position, make sure that you know what, what makes you get up in the morning? What position can make you wait from Friday to Monday to get back to work? And this is so important because once you know that position, then you're saving time. So if you're looking for medical assistant, if you are a mechanic or a CNA or engineer or a teacher, uh, you want to make sure that you know that very well and that those skills go along with that position. I always suggest to make a copy of the job posting. Once you make that copy of the job posting, read the job posting, ask yourself, do I meet the skills or the qualification that they are looking for? So just to go over a brief one, this is what I'm looking for, an associate engineer. I already know the position. So I'm gonna save time. I'm not gonna be going through the job postings and the listing because my goal is to become an associate engineer. So now, once I see this, it's going to capture my attention because this is the position that I am seeking. So I'm going to read it. And I'm giving you an example. Seeking entry-level engineers to perform aerodynamic or stress analysis. What kind of education are they looking for? A bachelor's degree in mechanical engineer. What are some of the requirements? Proficiency in words, Excel, PowerPoint, and excellent written and oral communication skills. How do I apply? <coughs> you want to go in on www.engineeringjobconnect.net. This is just an example of a job posting, okay? Now, I'm going to ask myself this question, okay? I know I'm an associate engineer. Uh, do I have the skills that they're asking for, perform aerodynamic or stress? Yes, I do. Do I have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineer? Yes, I do. What about the requirements? Well, I have all of them except for maybe Excel. But if you have majority of all of them, go for it. And how do I apply? I go right to the engineering job connect. So once you ask yourself those questions, then you're ready, you're headed in the right direction, okay? 
What goes on a resume? Where do I start? The heading on the resume tells who you are and how to contact you. This is very important because the employee need to know who you are and please do not use your nickname. So if your name is Deborah, don't use Debbie. Make sure it's Deborah Allen or whatever. Do not use Debbie, no nickname, because when you're filling out the information, uh, the EI9, they're going to want to make sure that matches up with your birth certificate, social security, or your driver's license when you come in. So now you want to make sure that's your name. Your address is optional, okay? But if you're going to put it on there, that's okay, but it is optional. Your phone or email address. Make sure that your phone is a working phone number. You do not want to use a phone number and they cannot get in contact with you. Make sure that your voicemail is appropriate. Like, hi, you have reached 817-123-4245. Will you please leave a message after the beep? Or you can go in and say, hi, this is Elma, you reach. 817-423-12345. This will let the person know that they did contact the right person. If you're going to use an email address, please make sure it is a what professional email address, like your name at gmail.com or yahoo.com. Please stay away from like 1960, 1950, because this could give a hint to the employer that that's your year of birth and they can take that year of birth as a tract and try to get a ballpark uh, of your age. So I would use like maybe your name 133 or something like that, but stay away from years that look like your birthday years, okay? You never want to use one of those, uh, I am a rapper at gmail.com. No, please stay away from your personal, but on your professional resume, use your name at Gmail or something close to your name. Okay, moving right along. Now, your objective on the resume, tell the position that you are applying for. And if you're tailoring this to a job posting, my suggestion would be, if they're looking for associate engineer, make that your objective on your resume because it will match up with the job posting. And this again will capture their attention of the reader because they're gonna say, oh, this is the position that I'm applying for. You don't wanna go in saying um, I'm available for all position, no. You need to be specific on your resume. And the resume that we're talking about is called a functional resume. It is tailored to the job posting, and this gives enough information for the employee to want to call you in for an interview, okay? So you're going to target to tailor your resume is to match the objective on the job posting. So this, again, will capture the reader's attention, okay? And I'm just giving you examples. Now, your summary is going to be an introduction to who you are, okay? It's like when you walk into an interview and they said, tell me a little bit about yourself. So this is what we're going to do on the summary. An entry level mechanical engineer with internship experience in the aerospace industry, strong leadership and problem solving skills, ability to communicate well with diverse groups and individuals, excellent written and oral communication skills and can work with the group. So here you are describing some of your high points in your summary. And if they have this on your job posting, then you can go in and take some of that off of the job posting and put it on your resume. Now your skills, this tells the employee what you can do. Now on the job posting, you can go in and read that job posting and they're gonna tell you on the job posting some of the skills that they're looking for. Read those skills and make sure that you can do those skills and then implement it into your resume. So I'm just giving you an example. Work effectively with the team. Improve video editing methods and process. Prioritize a variety of assignments. Save the company $2 million by creating 
a new way of cutting the wiring system to produce a better sound system. So here you're letting the company know your achievement, what you have accomplished, how you save the company money. Numbers always stand out. So when you see the number two here, it stands out, okay? If you are not working at that company, you always want to put ED at the end, like improve, prioritize, okay? You want to match that up. Your work experience. Uh, you want to start with your last job first. Most companies only go back at least five to 10 years, okay? And that depends on what they put in the job posting. That's another thing you want to read. If they do have the experience on there, then you want to tailor that experience in. Your education starts with your last year of school. So if your last year of school was a bachelor's degree, that's what you want to put on there. You would not go in and put high school and then your bachelor's degree, you would go with just your bachelor's degree. Uh, do not show your year of graduation on the resume. This is another form of them finding your age because they'll try to estimate it. And that could also go into age discrimination. What does the employer want? You have to think like an employer sometime when you are writing your resume and you wanna be honest with yourself. So think like an employee. What can you do for the company? That's gonna be based again on your skill. How can you improve my operation? You're thinking like a company now. Can you make the company money? Maybe you come up with a suggestion or something from your last job, like I put on that you saved the company so much money. Um, keep the company customers happy. You want to be able to stress that you are a team player and that you can work with people, okay? Now, in my conclusion here, you want to be able to write the resume to attract the interest of the employee. Read the job posting. Read it very carefully. Make sure you ask yourself, do I meet the skills on there? Do I really want to work for this company? You can also go in and try to pull it up on uh, their website. Check out all kinds of information. When you're looking for a job, you want to check out the website, check out the company, make sure this is the company that you will be interested in working in. Is this my dream company? Answer these questions for yourself. Then you got to look at the distance that you're going to be driving to these companies. That plays so much as well. Do I want to drive a long distance? Do I look at the traffic? What about negotiation skills? Do I have my salary in? You know, you want to think about all of this in your job search. It's help you write a good resume. You want to make sure that you read the job post. I can't stress that enough. Read that job post. Use enough information to get you the job. The resume must not only show the skills you have, it must demonstrate your successes as well. And if you're interested in each one of our centers, we do offer what we call workshops called MAPS. M, measure and meaning. A, your attitude and your, attitude and your altitude. P, purpose and pattern. S, sources and successes. These are all virtual sessions right now due to, to COVID and you're welcome to sign up for this. Connect with us on our social media. We have different ways you can connect with us and make sure if you do not have a LinkedIn page, go and try to get you a LinkedIn page. That's the way you can network. You can see and network your information out there. Again, we're with Workforce Solution for Tarrant County. Uh, this is our website here, and you can also call, and we do uh, set up appointments in our different centers. Okay, I'm going to show you an example of a resume real quickly. Okay, and this is just an example. You can use different formats as well. You have your heading at the very top uh, with your name. Again, like I said, your uh, address is optional. 
Make sure that your phone number is a working phone number that they can reach you. And again, check your voicemail. Make sure that when you are looking for work that you check your voicemail because you never know when companies are calling you. Uh, we've had a lot of people miss good job because they did not check their voicemail or their email. You are working for yourself in a sense. You are self-employed. So check your voicemail, check your emails on a daily, you know, to make sure that you do not miss any opportunities on getting that job. Look at your mechanical engineer. That's the objective. That's going to capture the attention because you're going straight to the point. I know a lot of people put, I am seeking a position at this, this, and this, but you want to make sure that you allow the company to know what position that you are seeking. They do not have time to try to figure out what position by reading your skills. You want to target that right off the top. What position? I'm looking at this resume. I know that they're looking for a mechanical engineer position. Your summary, again, is going to be a brief. Brief is not a long, you don't have to use a long paragraph. It's just a brief introduction of you that will give the company, you know, something to think about. Remember, your resume is a picture of you on paper that should open up an eye for the employers to want to call you in for an interview. Then your demonstrated proficiency. These are your high points. These are things that you want to put out there so it will also capture the attention. Uh, this comes again from what? Reading your job posting to see what are they looking for? What are they stressing in that job posting? Then you got to go to your skills and accomplishment. And I would suggest to use bullets. The bullets are, it, it cuts off the, the all togetherness because you don't want your resume to look like you're reading a book or something. You want to be able to capture again the attention by the bullets. It's going to stop that sentence and start another one. And then they can read it a lot quicker with the bullets. So I always suggest that you use the bullets, okay? And then you have your employment history. You always go back to your last job. Again, if you're still working at that job, you can go like 2015-presence, or if you're not working there, you will go from year-year. -year. I know uh, some people like to put month, day, and year. Uh, to be on the safe side, go with the year-year, unless they specifically ask for a date, month, and year, you know, month, day, and year. You want to put your position title, the name of the company, the location. You do not put the address of the company on the resume, but you can do like ABC Engineering, Fort Worth, Texas. Then you go to the next company and you will do the same thing. Your education, again, is going to be your last education. Uh, Bachelor of Science Mechanical Engineering, you will put the college, Prairie View and University, and the location. Prairie View, Texas. If you have any certifications, you will put those certifications on there. You want to make sure that there are updated certifications. And if you're in the military, you will put your station, United Army, and an honorable discharge. Please do not put dishonorable on there. Okay. So this is just um, basic, just a resume. It doesn't matter about the format. You can go in and use any kind of format possible, long as you're giving them the information that they're looking for, okay? Now, I just want to briefly go over workintexas.com, and then we'll come back and entertain any questions uh, that you may have on resumes. And remember, all resumes uh, may have different points, and it's good to listen to uh, other workshops, but we all want to make sure and emphasize that you want to put the information tailored into the job posting so the company will know that your skills meet up with the skills that they're asking for. If you are not registered with workintexas.com, this is the way that we look for work in the state of Texas. If you're ever going to draw unemployment insurance, you will be required to go in and register at workintexas.com. This is the way the screen is going to look. 
you're going to be asked to do a username. You will create your username. Along with that username, you're going to do a password. And just say, fans, you forget that, then they have here where you can go in and ask for a new password or change your password. We do have a Spanish version on here. You can search for jobs in your area by doing keywords because this is going to be based a lot on your keywords, your zip code or your city. And then we also have a location here where you can go in and put your status of mileage here. It's going to show you every day that you pull up how many job openings that we do have and the job posted for that day and how many active resumes that we have on the system. And we have employers also that goes in and they can log in and they can put in their company information or we can do that as well. We can go in and assist them with uh, entering their job posting information, okay? Here where you see job seekers is where you can go in, you can look for a job, you can create your resume on here. If you are a veteran, you put your information in, education and training, and this is going to create you a resume on our system as well. Uh, the employee will go in and do the same thing here. And by you putting in your information, they can also select you and you can see the job openings that come up on Work in Texas as well. So go in on workintexas.com, register, and go from there and make sure that you have all your information. Check Work in Texas, uh, I mean, daily if you possibly can, see if any new jobs match up. If you're not getting any jobs, go back in and check your keywords and add more keywords on there, okay? And you can do multiple skills on there. So if you're interested in C and A, or if you're interested in teachers or whatever, you can do as many keywords or work in Texas as possible. And again, if you need us to look at your resume, feel free to email me and I will look it over for you and get back with you just to see, uh, you know, how we can uh, help you and assist you with your resume. Again, your resume is a picture of you on paper and treat it like a million dollars because this is going to get you that next job. My saying is there is a job out there with your name on it and it's just waiting for you to come and get it. All right, thank you all. I hope we've been a, a successful as giving you some information about how to tailor your resume. Again, my name is Elma Kirkwood. I work with Workforce Solutions for Tarrant County.